Welcome to Where I'm From, the podcast that proves no matter how far you go, you'll always keep a little piece of home with you. I'm Bill Meeks. This week, comedic actor-writer Kelly Vrooman joins me to talk about where she's from, Mansfield, Ohio. Let's learn about the self-proclaimed fun center of Ohio. I could have sworn that was Cleveland. You might know Kelly Vrooman from recent roles on shows like Blackish and Grey's Anatomy. Or, if you're a little younger, you might remember her as the friendly host on the Sunny Side Up show on Sprout. Hi, Sproutlets! <laughs> my name is Kelly, and this is my friend. <laughs> but before she came to Hollywood to make a name for herself in comedy, she lived in a village in Mansfield, Ohio. You've probably seen Mansfield, actually. It was the setting of the classic film The Shawshank Redemption, after all. Today, we'll talk to Kelly about Mansfield, including her village-turned-town, Ontario. I'll ask her how she landed in children's television. And maybe we'll even fit in a little improv. I'm feeling feisty. We're so glad you can join us. And I'd like to welcome to the show, Kelly Vrooman. How you doing, Kelly? Hey, I'm so good. So great to have you back on. We haven't talked since uh, you, you came on to be our guest for Central Florida Sketch festival yeah that's right CFL that's schedules. right yeah, yeah yeah fun times okay. yeah i would like to thank you uh because there's actually at some point during the stream you gave me a compliment about how awesome everything was you're watching the central florida sketch comedy festival gobble gobble y'all uh, you're rocking it by the way this is like the smoothest virtual uh, event I have seen so far. Thank you. It doesn't feel like that behind the scenes, but I'm glad we're coming off okay. <laughs> well, we can't see, at least right now, Bill, how much you're sweating. And I put it in my uh, my professional reel now, so it's gotten me worked. So thank you. <gasps> what? Oh so, my uh, gosh. Actually, right up top here, I'm going to give you the opportunity to pay me another compliment that I can use to get more work. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just any compliment uh, up up to me right now? Yep. Okay. First of all, no podcaster has better looking glasses than Bill Thank Meeks. You. Thank you. Thank you. I, I try. I try. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's a really good clip. Uh, go ahead and just give me one more. But say, <laughs> but say it was a very wise decision to get those glasses because they really make you stand out. Okay, Bill, it was such a wise decision for you to get those glasses because they really make you stand out. Oh, thank you, Kelly. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. There's, there's, you sent a very big, intimidating looking man that is standing right off camera doing this. That's Charlie. He's, he's pretty nice. You know, if, if you give him a peanut butter sandwich, he probably won't do anything. I don't have any peanut butter. I don't have any peanut butter. And even then, the chances are still a maybe. <gasps> okay. Uh, for, oh. for the next guest, I'm going to make a note here send them peanut butter uh, before the show. <laughs> Hi, Sproutlet. <laughs> My name is Kelly, and this is my friend, Chica. We're so glad you can join us here in the Sunshine Barn. We're going to play with so many of our friends today, friends who know how to lend a helping hand, like Barney and Bob the Builder, Thomas the Tank Engine, Fireman Sam, and Angelina Ballerina. Uh, we do have uh, over here in the chat room, a trash can man says, Kelly, we miss watching you in the morning on Sunny Side Up. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I'll find, I'll give you the code to my security cameras at my house and you can just watch me now at <laughs> my house. Well, it, I, I don't know what, what time it is where Trash Can Man is, but it's yeah. morning here. So it's kind of like like a mini mini reunion episode, oh, right? Except great. I wasn't there. But We yeah. did go until noon uh, East Coast time. So it's almost noon here, West Coast time. Uh, Excellent. So in some bizarro world, we're doing this. We had I had so much fun on that show. Mm -hmm. It it again, this is the where I'm from podcast. So I'll keep tying it back to Mansfield, Ohio. But yeah. the set for this was in a little barn on a little farm. And it felt I mean, I grew up. My grandpa had horses that he kept at his friend's barn. And we would go ride horses. And I grew up like swinging on an old rope swing that was in the top part of a barn. And our our little set on the Sunny Side Up show was <laughs> was a barn. And the co-host was a chicken. And it, it <laughs> felt, I felt very home there. I mean, apparently with how, how much love you have from, for example, Trash Can Man. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Trash Can Man, 
freaking awesome handle. <laughs> Trash can man. I could mean so many things. Why don't okay. you talk a little bit about uh, your journey to become a kid show host, right? Well, did did uh, all the theater in my little uh, hometown of Mansfield, Ohio. And mm -hmm. then um, when I graduated from college, I got my first gig was working at a renaissance fair in in central pennsylvania actually it's kind of like <laughs> eastern pennsylvania so it was only about an hour and a half outside of philly i yeah. worked at a renaissance fair i walked around in a corset not in a sexy way i <laughs> i was a lady in waiting and my my collar was like up to my neck but i still had to wear a corset underneath it so there was <laughs> absolutely no cleavage no mm. shape to me whatsoever um so imagine a, a box and that was me and i yeah. Uh, I just had so much fun. I did improv. I got to, the reason I took the job, again, I'd never been to a Renaissance fair, had no idea what I was in for, had no idea how many kilts I would see, uh, <laughs> but it got me close to Philadelphia and that was a big city. And I took the job because I was also going to be doing Shakespeare. So I built up my resume with some uh, Shakespeare. I then was like, well, I'm going to move to Philly. I moved to Philly. I it almost pretty immediately got a commercial agent. So I started auditioning for commercials there then formed a good relationship with one of the casting directors who thought of me when the job for, for Sprout came up for the Sunny Setup show. And mm -hmm. they were casting all over the country. They were looking in Chicago, New York, Orlando, and Philly. And so I guess all over the East, <laughs> Central <laughs> and East, Not, nowhere West. We don't care about you. Get out of here. They West have Coast unions Coast. out there. We can't afford people. Can't afford <laughs> that. It was definitely a non-union gig. And so, yeah, they, they, brought me in the casting director gave me a you know couple she pulled me aside and was like just talk normally everyone's talking cutesy to the camera like kids are idiots mm -hmm. just talk like you're talking to a friend i was like yeah got it so i did i went in my belt fell off during the audition for some reason it just like stretched <laughs> and fell off because i got it at a thrift store and it was old and uh i ran with it and joked about it we've been talking about improv improv i had been doing improv for a while by that point and so yeah, yeah. i then uh booked the job and it was amazing my first contract was i mean the money was not much at <laughs> all for being on a national show but the fact that i like was making a regular paycheck i called home my mom yeah. and dad were camping at the mohegan uh state campground in ohio with some of their friends that they still camp with to this day <laughs> and they were sitting around i was like i got it i got the job and i heard my mom go oh I'm here with the voices and the Hedricks. You guys, Kelly got a job. She's going to make it. Like, mom, <laughs> mom, until I booked a job that was going to give me a regular paycheck, I did not know that my mom, who was born and raised in Mansfield, Ohio, she had been like shoving down her fear that I was going to be homeless or end up a drug, drug addict or end mm -hmm. up doing porn or whatever in my mom's mind was going yeah. to be where I was going to end up as an actor, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, they don't mm -hmm. they have no idea of the entertainment industry at all for that. Yeah. Truly, all they hear are the bad stories or the, you know, see the shows with a bunch of violence and sex and stuff. So the fact that mm -hmm. I booked a job and it was on a kid's show where I wasn't going to have to take my top off or swear. <laughs> Those are <laughs> equal things. Uh, it was the best. It was the absolute best case scenario. And when I was leaving Sprout and moving out to L.A., I know a bunch of my mom's darling Mansfield, Ohio fears came back up to the surface like, well, L.A. is so far away. But, you know, then living in L.A., I've been able to do a bunch of cool things. And I met my yeah. husband and I now have two kids mm -hmm. and I own a home. And then this cool mountain house that we get to come <laughs> to. I I love it. It was truly Sprout was this incredible mm -hmm. kickoff for me and teaching me how to think on my feet with the pressure of uh, thousands and thousands of eyes watching me. With Especially your know, impressionable kids. Exactly. Yeah. The pressure of having to filter what I say in a way that is not only going to be appropriate, but also make sense mm -hmm. to a kid yeah. it, it, and to just have fun, to just mm -hmm. have a good time and work with a team of people to put on something that was truly, really extraordinary. Did you feel then or do you now feel any pressure to kind of maintain that squeaky clean kid show host image? Yeah, less so than before I had kids. I think now that I have kids, people are like, oh, she's a mom. We can forgive her. <laughs> we, like, she's a mom. So she's she lost can, to us. <laughs> she's 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 asexual now. She's just there's she's asexual. There's nothing about her that is. <laughs> but also, I think people are like. 
they're a little more forgiving. Like it's a little entertaining if I've got some spice to me. I think I've gotten mm-hmm. a lot snarkier. People like to say, oh, you have a sassy mom energy now. I'm like, yeah, I do. Now go to bed <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> well, we're here to talk today uh, about uh, Mansfield. Yeah, I grew up in Mansfield, Ohio. I actually grew up in a little village that was like a part of Mansfield, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of just like a school district called Ontario. And it ended up getting big enough and like where all the new businesses came to that now it is its own town. So the fact that I grew up in Mansfield, Ohio is now like it no longer exists where I lived. It's now Ontario, Ohio. And it's kind of a bit of a weird identity. Like now, now you have to be from Ontario, Ohio. And I'm like, but I'm not, yeah. I don't know who I am anymore. And I, I don't have access to time travel, so I can't go back and change it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've always been a bit of a theater kid and uh, you mentioned some theater stuff. So obviously we're going to go there first. Oh, yes. Uh, you mentioned you got your start doing theater in Mansfield. So uh, first off, what kind of led you to want to be on the stage? I think it was fortunately just kind of constant encouragement from people who were like, you should do this. Like I was in kindergarten and there was a play and they, you know, were putting on like the little like kindergarten production. And they were (laughs) like, well, Kelly can stand up in front of people and not poop her pants or (laughs) vomit. So let's make her Little Miss Mouse. So my first stage performance was me as Little Miss Mouse, where Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it was just a a mouse that had to like crawl under a mushroom while we all (laughs) sang a song about rain. And then later that year, there was the Little Red Hen and I was not the Little Red Hen. So that's when I was like, oh, I don't just automatically get all the leads. (laughs) I've got to work for it. So I then was one of the babies and we were given like when she made the bread and she was like, well, fine, no bread for you. I'm going to give it to my babies. Mm -hmm. I love the bread that they got so much. I dug in and just like fistful of bread and like (laughs) shoved it in my face. So for me, early stage performance involved instant stardom and great food. And I think that's <laughs> honestly what has just kept me going is those little times of being like, oh, I get to be a star. I get to have people tell me I'm great. Mixed <laughs> with, ooh, they feed you really well. It, it can kind of set you up for disappointment a little too, like having those very early theatrical successes. Like for example, I uh, in first grade, I was Thumper in band. Oh, oh gosh, yes. And, and it, it didn't go well. Um, oh, because. I, I hadn't learned about projection yet, so it was a constant <gasps> struggle. They actually, there were like three lines. They made me like walk all the way across the stage to get a microphone to deliver oh, them. No. And it like, it put me off theater until I was like 14 or 15 years old. I was like, that's enough of that, man. Oh, no. No, that's, uh, that's, that's hard. That's intense. Do you have any uh, early theater horror stories like that? Not really. I think another reason it kept me going. I'm a I'm a person that is a high functioning, very afraid person, and I, <laughs> and I I fortunately like I I just exist. I function very well with a lot of anxiety, uh, and so I think I just got used to like. Well, I should want to do this. Well, I should. I mean, this is what other people want to do, so I should do it. And I just kept like su- suffering through it. Uh, fortunately, without a ton of bad stuff happening that would have just made me stop and become, yeah. you know, a lawyer or a, a, a doctor. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like, or become one of those stupid professions, those ones that dummies become, you know, a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb doctors. Who needs them, right? <laughs> so in Mansfield was a was theater sort of a big thing or was it more of like uh, your friends and your parents would come and that was about it? Uh, No, it was actually a a big thing. So in the little town of Mansfield, there is a a big, beautiful theater, which is a very, it's like the most central, big, gorgeous theater in Ohio. So that's where they would always hold the Miss Ohio pageant. And there would be like, basically anything big that came through central Ohio would go to the Mansfield Renaissance Theater. We at the Renaissance Theater are proud to be part of a rising and resilient community. We strive every day to be a beacon of hope and a place where people of all ages can experience the joy of the arts. And it was that like gilded, beautiful, ornate, classical theater, and they kept really good care of it. So I was fortunate to grow up being able to go see theater in like a like a 
just a, I, I think, and I haven't been there in a long time, but I would say, I mean, at least at the time I saw it as a very much a world class, like very, yeah. like a reason to be very proud. And the local productions would be put on by the local branch of the Ohio State University Theater and, mm-hmm. you know, b- big choruses and um, symphonies and stuff would come through. So I, I got some really early great education. I, uh, <laughs> my um, first experience too was at this little Mansfield uh, Playhouse, which was the local community theater, and they would put on youth productions. We strive to do the absolute best that we can possibly do. There are many times, and I've said this repeatedly to audiences throughout the years, that just because we are community theater does not mean we do not strive to put on professional productions. So I'd get to do that. And I mean, I remember audiences being pretty packed. But I also think at the time, I didn't care whether or not the audience was packed. For me, it was just like, oh, my gosh, yay. Oh, mm-hmm. it's right before the show is starting and the anticipation and the excitement and like the tingly yeah. all over the body. I mean, I was hooked. Mm-hmm. And I so, think yeah. Mans- Mansfield was a big, uh, yeah, they were just super supportive of of the kids, at least in the youth productions. And then later when I was in high school and I did some of the like adult productions that would mm-hmm. perform at the Mansfield or the Mansfield Renaissance uh, we had pretty good crowds. I don't know about you. And obviously you have a lot more on stage experience than I do. But for me, like I kind of have to like block the audience out. I have to like not think about them beyond just like a general sense of how they're sounding, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like a- it's, it's hard when you're, especially when you're doing comedy and the crowd mm-hmm. is quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to go. Yeah, I mean, you do have to question because you do have to, at least with comedy, in a sense, chase, chase the laughter. Because if people aren't laughing, what you're doing isn't resonating with them. I mean, sure, there's a chance that literally everyone in the audience is a thinker, not an mm-hmm. outward laugher. But that's, yeah. I mean, that's rare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that silence is so important too, as a bit of like negative feedback. I know I've done like improv shows and stuff. Where like I say I would say one thing and like the room would just go cold. Like there was like chatter, hustle, bustle, and then immediately cold. I'm like, oop, that was the wrong move in this yeah. situation. Yeah. I found that whenever I'm mean spirited, uh, it doesn't it doesn't play well. So I'm I'm rare. I mean, I haven't that's like my I never go there because it just uh, for me doesn't read well. I can't I'm not a Bill Burr. I'm not a one of those people that people are like, yeah, come be mean yeah. to me. <laughs> Yeah. And I think I think uh, the thing that kind of got my class turned against me when I was doing the scene was that uh, it was one of those games where it's like an interrogation. And you have to guess uh, who the person is or whatever. And the, the name was Sarah Jessica Parker. Uh-huh. And like I was thinking Sarah Jessica Parker, square peg, sex in the city. Oh, I heard like three people call her like a horse face. I'm going to use horse. And then like, ooh, the room turned on me. It was yeah. bad news there. Yeah. It's hard because comedians too, especially when you're improvising, you're like, I, I, the first thing that comes to mind and here I go. And you're told not to, not to think or not to question yourself and to just Mm -hmm. act. But the difference between novice improvisers and then very experienced improvisers, which you are now much more Mm -hmm. of an experienced improviser, right? Than you were when you did that is that you learn to make that filter happen in nanoseconds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I think it's just like, once you wander into kind of an uncomfortable corner like that, you're like, yeah. I'm going to stay away from that. No horses, no Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> I'm never going to talk about women ever again. You just go extreme. <laughs> um, but, then, but then that's the other way. And then people get about, why is he never talking about women in this scene? It's like, <laughs> He's someone so was, sexist. <laughs> someone was like, what about your mother? And you were like, I don't have a mother. I don't trust female, <laughs> female parents. <laughs> like, wow. He went, he went the other way. <laughs> The uh, other uh, cool thing about uh, being from Mansfield is that uh, at one point uh, when I was little, you know, it's a it's a little city surrounded by farmland and Amish country and Mm -hmm. apple pie and baseball. I loved growing up in Mansfield. It had Mm -hmm. it had so much of a Americana feel to it. Yeah. uh, Mixed with some ex- ex- pretty extreme poverty people who are like also fighting for their like fighting for their rights but 
their yard is also full of like old cars that don't work anymore. But those are their cars and don't touch my cars, America. (laughs) I was a big sucker for like wanting to get out there and make something of myself and, Mm. you know, not... I think not be stuck in Mansfield. I don't think I ever would have seen it as being stuck in Mansfield until I left. I think there was a little part of me. And one of the early things I did is I, uh, speaking of Miss the Miss Ohio pageant, there was a commercial out that was like, do you want to be famous? Come join the Miss Ohio teen pageant. And I was like, okay, oh my gosh, maybe I could be, maybe I could be somebody with the Miss Ohio teen pageant. So my parents were very supportive. They were never like, that's dumb. It's, it's an expensive entry fee. Anybody can join. This isn't actually your way to be, make anything of yourself. They were just like, okay, we'll support you. So I, I, paid $30 or whatever. Maybe I think it was like $130 which for us in the 90s was a lot of money. And yeah. um, I joined the Miss Ohio teen pageant where I, I wore the dress that I just wore for a school dance. Although we didn't have <laughs> dance because I went to Mansfield Christian High School and elementary wow. school and junior high. And so there was no dancing ever. So so it was a school stand across the room and stare at the other half of the, it, the it was a It was a come, uh, have dinner, or snacks and <laughs> stare at each other across the room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but they did have dinner and snacks and deco- decorations. You could take pictures. Mm. There was lots of pictures to be taken together. And so, yeah, I, I joined the Miss Ohio teen pageant and, uh, out of honestly, it was a lot of a lot of girls because anybody could join, anybody could participate. You just had to pay the fee and buy a dress or whatever. Uh, yeah. I won best speech, <laughs> mostly written by my mom. Uh, I won best interview. That pretends well for what we're doing today. Go ahead. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Yeah. Except for now, I'm just saying, um, all the time because I'm a new mom and I'm so tired. I have two kids that are both two and under and I'm just like, I don't sleep. So I say, um, a lot right now. But, um, (laughs) the Miss Ohio pageant. Yeah. Uh, I did end up in the top 20. And for sure, uh, of all the girls in there, I was voted Miss uh, Miss Personality, which was their version of Miss Congeniality, which I later interpreted that none of them saw me as a threat. They all knew I wouldn't win, and I was too goofy and uh, short. Mm-hmm. Everyone that was uh, there in the top 20 other than me was, like, statuesque. And one of them went on to become Miss Ohio later, Natalie Whitwer. And you will get your revenge eventually. Yeah, I'm going to take her down. Uh, ever since then, my life has been wanting to take her down. <laughs> oh, I, not I mean, at all. You could just see the hate in your eyes. It's funny. <laughs> I have so much hate for people that succeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must really hate yourself then because you've had a very story career. I have. I've enjoyed my I've enjoyed my life for sure. Yeah, actually, you know, like I, I don't necessarily like to get into like I was browsing your IMDb and was really impressed with all the various projects, but I was browsing your IMDb and I was really impressed with all the well, various projects. Thanks. I think I don't do a very good job of being like, hey, everybody world, here's what I'm working on. Come think I'm cool. Wow. Um, Even the way I said that had a lot of judgment, didn't it? Like I really judge yeah. people that do that, but I don't. I appreciate when other people do that because I'm like, oh, cool. You're on this thing. I want to watch you on that thing. Mm-hmm. It's always very awkward. And even just like this podcast, like tweeting out a million times this morning because I was going live a couple of times with it. I'm always like, I'm sorry, guys. I know it's promotion, but I got to. So (laughs) someone come watch. (laughs) (laughs) But here's the fun thing. Talking about Mansfield Renaissance. Ooh, ooh, full circle. So I'm doing (laughs) George M. Cohan. George M. is a play about the guy that wrote like, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. And of course, being from Mansfield, Ohio, everybody was like, that's Americana. Wave those those flags. I love these songs. I want to go see this (laughs) musical. It's packed all the time. People loved it. So doing George M. mm, I think it was George M. Anyway, the... Uh, we were given dance partners and I was assigned mm-hmm. a dance partner and I was like, oh, this guy's cute. Who's this guy? Oh, he's older. He's college or even college graduate. And I was like a senior mm-hmm. in high school, newly broke up from my high school boyfriend. I was like, ready. And <laughs> uh, this found out later was the son whose dad killed his mom. He was wow. my dance partner. Wow. Yeah. Was he a good dancer at least? He was. Yeah, he was a good dancer. He was very handsome. Um, mm-hmm. I He was kind. He did quit the show, though. I don't remember why. Probably, <laughs> maybe he was bullied for being like, oh, your dad killed your mom. I don't know. Yeah. If so, or, you know, just 
just like percolating severe emotional trauma or something, you know? Oh, something. maybe that. Maybe it was just yeah. him having to exist in a world in which his dad <laughs> killed his mom. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. That could make it a little hard to make, make it to rehearsal. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, apparently the Ohio State Reformatory uh, is in Mansfield. And th- that was the setting of the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Oh, my Um, gosh. How has this not come up yet? I apologize. (laughs) Yes. Mansfield, Ohio is the filming location of the Shawshank Redemption, which is kind of another reason that I think I had this extreme like, oh, Hollywood exists. Mm -hmm. Hollywood happened here. Movies happened here. Like, yeah, that was always kind of this really Mm -hmm. cool thing and like a huge point of pride for us that one of the best movies of all time filmed in our hometown. And we're, a boy that I dated in high school, his uncle or his neighbor or somebody was one of the naked guys in the shower scenes, in a shower scene at some point. Like, you know, I was like, like <laughs> dude, that's my friend's butt. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be like one of my interesting facts. Like, I'm from the town where Shawshank Redemption was filmed. And exactly. very sad news. The big, beautiful tree mm-hmm. was felled a couple years oh. ago. Yeah. They should have put a plaque on it or something. Well, there's on, the guys. stump, I think, is still there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, you can okay. see the stump. But it was like, it, it was felled because it, Am I saying it right? It was felt? Is that a thing? I think that's like... I. That sounds like it's some version of some period of English. Know. So, yeah, yeah. I should know. My dad... That know, tree was felled. Yeah. Now that so I, many times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. But they. it, it was because it got diseased and it was... It's no fault of anyone's other than <laughs> it was a danger to itself and others. And not a landmark, unfortunately. So it didn't have protection. It didn't have uh. protection. I mean, it... People tried. Oh, I mean, did it's they, a landmark. Did they, like, chain themselves to the tree? <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. If I had been home with nothing else to do, I would have just for the story. <laughs> <laughs> the Shawshank Redemption Reclamation or Project. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah, Reclamation Project. I will say, if you are ever in Mansfield, Ohio, at any point, tour the old reformatory. Mm. It is it is wild. It is so old and cool and creepy, and you can go walk it and see it. And it's cool. Yep. And I'm sure like any old prison, there's just a ton of evil spirits in there. Ton of evil spirits. Yeah. Oh, so where are you from originally? Uh, ori- well, I've been around. I was born and raised in Katy, Texas. And then oh, we moved. Oh, K-A-T-Y. 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 That's actually what I was talking about with the previous guest. Wow. How embarrassing. This is awkward. Talking about a previous guest with your current guest. This is. Yeah. You're the better guest. You're the better guest. Oh, good. I'm your soulmate guest. <laughs> but, but then like the biggest chunk of time I had, which was end of middle school, high school and college was in it, not too far from Ohio in uh, Wheeling, West Virginia. Oh, yeah. Wheeling, West Virginia, man. That's right over the right over the border there in the little uh, bit part that pokes up. Right. Well, the way we always explained it when people would ask us is anyone from Wheeling will like do a middle finger and be like, we're about right there. <laughs> that is. Because that's, that's the it. shape of the West Virginia state. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's brilliant. How have I never heard that growing up in Ohio? But I think those of us, uh, you know, that have a big influence of uh, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, we're we're even different than the Midwest people of of Minnesota, Wisconsin. I feel like the people that have that extreme cold as their, Mm -hmm. like, one of their identifying features, they have a toughness to them that those of us from Ohio, West Virginia, Indiana don't have. Western Pennsylvania, like, we have a little bit of a, oh, just a, just a general kind of, I'm sorry. Like, and it's not <laughs> even Canada. That's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Where it's like, I know you're going to forgive me. But it's still this yeah. kind of like, oh, I, I just forgive me, please. Like, I don't even know, at least for me, like the way I approach pretty much <laughs> all of my relationships are like, hi, I really want you to like me. I really want this to go well. I really want you to be happy. What can I do? And I'm I'm just going to start from a place of like servitude. And, and maybe I, I don't yeah. know. That's there's no, a, that, this like inherent. That's funny you me. mentioned that because, you know, when I've had corporate gigs and stuff, one of the big problems they've always had with me is I was very willing to fall on my own sword. Like. <laughs> So there's a problem. Uh, yeah, it was my fault. Let, let's deal with it and move it was on. My fault. It, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but also, yeah, I think there's like also this like farmer, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You get get it done type thing. That's a really cool yeah. determination, which my hometown of Mansfield growing up 
so many of my friends, like all the kids that I I perceived as having money, their parents worked at GM, at the GM plant. There was a big old GM plant. When it was put in in the mid-century, they built a ton of small homes because that's all people wanted at the time was small homes. And then yeah. those small homes were now employ- you know, uh, inhabited by other people with quote unquote worse jobs. But the GM people were like the ones that I knew that had nice homes and new construction and stuff. And then it closed. And all Mm. of a sudden, so many of my friends had this instant instability in their life. And for me, fortunately, my dad's, my dad still works. He's retired, but he, he, you know, goes in and does part-time stuff for them too. His, his place never closed. And I had this incredible gift as a child of having uh, pa- uh, my parents have uh, stable work. I mean, when mm-hmm. that happened, though, it definitely showed me that life is not guaranteed. Stability is not guaranteed. You could go yeah. from being a, a person on top to being a person that doesn't know where their next paycheck is coming from. And and that was hard, but I, I think a, an incredibly valuable life lesson. It very much reminds me of, uh, you know, in Wheeling and Weirton when the steel mills closed in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because the whole town ran on it. You know, the bars were supporting the workers. It happened maybe two or three years after we moved there. And it was just interesting sort of over the course of three or four years watching the economy just kind of down, 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 down. And I don't know if it ever really recovered in Wheeling. I know there's a lot of good hearted people trying to make it uh, come back. But yeah. There, last time when I went to Mansfield, okay, so modern Mansfield, downtown Mansfield has had a beautiful revitalization happen. Mm-hmm. Like there is this really cool wine shop where you go downstairs and you like actually are like drinking wine among the wine barrels in this wine cellar. Mm-hmm. It's rad. And then there's th- the downtown like main block has this beautiful white gazebo and they've really made it this like beautiful garden area. They've Mm -hmm. they've done a lot of cool things that I think are like, oh, my gosh, a Hallmark movie needs to film in downtown Mansfield. It's it's really idyllic right now. But then Ontario, which is now (laughs) where I'm where I'm from. Who am I? Uh, Hold on. Let me cross out Mansfield and put Ontario. (laughs) Ontario, (laughs) Ohio. (laughs) It has that's where like the mall was. And then it built out to be that's where the Walmart came and the Target and the Meyer and the Sam's Club all came to Ontario. And so that then became where all the restaurants and the Applebee's and the (laughs) when I got married, my husband and I got married in the middle of the woods in Asheville, South Carolina with just our parents who had never met before and our siblings and their spouses. Like no nieces, nephews, no, you know, there were a couple like aunts that we would have liked to have been there. It was, it was, it was, but you know, it was just so super, super small and super immediate. But we then did a local like Mansfield, Ohio wedding for all Mm -hmm. of the people. My husband grew up in Indiana. He's from Oregon, but grew up in Indiana. And we did a local thing there. And afterward, we were like, what's open? We need an afterhang. Where do we go? <laughs> Guess where we went. I'm going to give you three guesses. Three guesses. Three guesses. Where did we go for a late night hang in a small town? Uh, in I would assume the, the local bar. Okay. Be more specific. Um, the local sports bar. Think chain restaurant. Uh. Oh, what are the ones that are in Ohio? Um, Think chain restaurant that is everywhere. (laughs) At Applebee's? Yes! (laughs) I got it. (laughs) You got it. Oh, no. Third guess. Freaking (laughs) Applebee's is where we had our after party. And I will tell you, my friends that came from out of town, that came from Philadelphia or L.A., were digging the jam of (laughs) of the Ontario, Ohio Applebee's. I mean, there's something Mm. about it that you were just like, I cannot believe I am in absolute formal attire, chilling <laughs> at 1 a.m., shoving apps in my face, drinking mm. giant 28 ounce tubs of margarita <laughs> <laughs> and just loving my life. We just took over. I mean, everybody was like loving it. Some game from who knows what year is mm. on all the screens. Gosh, it was awesome. Yeah, well, that's the kind of the interesting thing about Applebee's is when it, someone suggests Applebee's, you're like, eh, Applebee's, okay. But once you're there and you've had a couple of drinks in you, it's like, okay, this is my Applebee's. This is, is this is my you place. You own it. It is your place. It is truly the cheers. 
It is the universal cheers of at least, mm-hmm. I'm told, I'll, I think, Midwest America. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely of Ohio. Any and, city uh, in Ohio. <laughs> Drinks are priced to uh, overindulge. Definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. They are. They are. They are there to serve the college student, the mm-hmm. the sports lover, the recent divorcee. I mean, they <laughs> are. Applebee's is there for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 They give you enough well drinks that the appetizers seem really, really tasty. And then God. and then it's just like that's how they make their money. <laughs> yeah. But if you honestly, I would beg to I would. I would beg to differ that the uh, that the appetizers are really tasty. They are mm-hmm. packed full of whatever junk and trash our bodies are not supposed to have, but just crave. And I'm sure will hurt yeah. us evolutionarily going forward. Mm-hmm. And, and then it's like a, a cycle because like you have like the fat and the salt and then that makes you really thirsty. <sighs> so you grab the drink and then you're like, oh, I'm yes. hungry again. And then you eat and it. Vicious cycle. Vicious Honestly, cycle. I don't know how we ever leave Applebee's. Now that you're saying this, it is it is like it is a a, a pit of what is it? What it's called? A vortex. It's a vortex. vortex. <laughs> <laughs> this a episode is vortex. called Kelly Roman and the Applebee's Vortex. <laughs> Excellent. I'm gonna write that down right here. <laughs> Uh, we have our first game here, Kelly. Ooh, uh, it's a game. It's fun. Okay. So this game, I, I just came up with it a couple weeks ago. It's gone pretty well the f- few times I've done it. It's called Wheel, Wheel of, of Anecdotes. Anecdotes. So I'm going to give you a suggestion, kind of like an improv suggestion. And then your ch- challenge is to respond with a short anecdote from your hometown. <gasps> the shorter the better. I love this game. Okay, shorter the better. Got it. I can do that. Okay. So first up, Richland Mall. Oh, Richland Mall. Uh, There was a hot topic there. I was always scared to go in and I thought maybe they had satanic things and it was bad. (laughs) And I almost, I did, I boycotted it as a a kid with huge convictions. (laughs) It also uh, is the place where we would go and we would just like walk around and, Mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was like, the pack sun and those places like it was where you would go and get dropped off by your parents and you could walk around and kids who were daring enough could smoke outside i know the mall where i grew up you could smoke inside like they they would have like security come around to oh the my gosh area. you're right inside yep you're uh, right and, you know, nope you i stand away. corrected you could smoke inside and my grandma yeah. was a mall walker and she wore this cute little like a uh, shiny jumpsuit and I would, whenever she would watch me or I was home from school or like the time in fifth grade when I got lice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when half the class got lice and I had to stay with grandma and grandpa during the days while grandma picked nits out of my hair. And then when she couldn't handle it, we would go walk around Richland Mall. <laughs> nice. Amish. Amish, man. Amish people. You, you can't drive to Columbus without. So the way we take to Columbus from Mansfield is you go down, oh gosh, 314 and mm. it is Amish country and you will pass three, four, five, six Amish buggies. You see the people inside like, whoa, look at that. Um, they Amish people built, put a roof on my parents' house. They built my, all my parents' kitchen cabinets. Oh, it is wow. like the best, most amazing furniture. And when they come to your house, uh, either they get you pay to have them dropped off in a van or you drive to Amish country, pick them up and you drive them back to your house, which is what <laughs> my mom did for two reasons. She's cheap and she's just <laughs> curious. So she would just yeah. like drill them about questions about their life. And she asked them, She's she like, said, I need small talk. Yeah. She said, so Jacob, could I be Amish? And he went, oh, you would have to greatly improve your life. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom is like the most pious, ad- adorable, evangelical, mm-hmm. Christian, conservative woman. And yet he was like, yeah. yikes, you are too bad. <laughs> There's like the religious standard and then there's the Amish standard. <laughs> then there's the Amish standard, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. Buckeye. Buckeye, Ohio State Buckeyes. And if you are in Ohio, you have to try the most amazing tasty dessert ever in the history of the world. It mm-hmm. is a packed little ball of, of peanut butter and powdered sugar. And it's like a yes. like a like a grainy peanut butter fudge dipped in chocolate. And it looks like a buckeye off of a buckeye tree. Oh. It's diabetes in your hands. Oh my gosh, they're so good. <laughs> They are like the problem with those is you really can't have just one. If there's like five of them that's sitting there, you're not walking away until all five are gone. And if it is truly an Ohio uh, smorgasbord, 
Somebody will bring them in an egg carton so they stay separated. So it's like like a freaking plastic egg carton or like crappy <laughs> egg carton, styrofoam yeah. with those inside. It has to be styrofoam because then the chocolate doesn't stick to it. Mm. <laughs> and you open it up. Is it eggs? <laughs> no. It's freaking diabetes. <laughs> Not diabetes in a box. So good. <laughs> Listen. Blizzard. Oh my gosh, my 10th birthday. There was a blizzard. Uh, I was new to the school, had a whole bunch of new friends. Our house, again, small, not decorated, very nice. But my aunt lived across the street from us and they had a very pretty house. She worked for Sprint, the local Sprint. She was, she had money. So we were having my birthday party at her house. Snowstorm, blizzard, ice storm hits. And ice would form around the trees to be like, I mean, half an inch to an inch uh, on top of every little like twig. And so only a few kids were able to come. And I remember my mom calling people being like, hi, are you still able to come? Are you still able to come? And one mom was putting people on speakerphone so I could hear their voices if they couldn't come. And uh, one of them, Megan's mom said, uh, excuse me, do you think I'm gonna come? Can you please look outside? What do you see? And mom was like, <laughs> ice. She was like, yeah, so I'm not coming and hung up. And I sobbed. Oh, wow. Yeah. First time I heard that adults could be assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know that all of them are all assholes. All the time. Forty like percent of the time. <laughs> all the time, adults are assholes. <laughs> beer. Beer. Grew up dry family. Never had beer until I was twenty-one. Mm. Um, I did have beer poured, uh, spilled on me once when I was at a Cleveland Indians game when they were the Cleveland Indians. R.I.P. Glad it's changed. Very proud of you, Cleveland. Way to go. And <laughs> smelling that beer, uh, my response was, "Ugh, this smells terrible. I'm never going to drink beer. I love beer now, guys. Like, I have to like go gluten-free, but I love gluten-free beer very, very much. So that's a good lesson for all the kids out there. If you don't like beer at first, just keep trying it. Just keep it trying it. Yeah. yeah. Come on, kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And last but not least, and this might hit, it might not, Cedar Point. Oh my gosh, Cedar Point hits so hard. Okay, Excellent. picture this. It's 1999, maybe around there. It felt like it to me. There's a new roller coaster being built called the Millennium Force. Ooh. Millennia Millennium Force. Yeah. Yes. Not Millennium Falcon, not Millennium Falcon or whatever, Millennium Force. It is the tallest, fastest roller coaster in the world at the time. The day it opens, I want to be, I freaking love roller coasters. In my mind, mm -hmm. I was like, God, all I want in heaven is roller coasters. There have to be roller coasters in heaven. Because heaven's perfect, roller coasters, it wouldn't be perfect <laughs> without roller coasters. That's how much I love roller coasters, okay, growing up. So I was like, I am gonna be there when it opens. I'm waiting there. They open up the gates and it is a stampede because other people love roller coasters as much as I do come to find mm -hmm. out. Oh, whatever i i'm i'm maybe you, the number one fan now not anymore like i'm like yeah i'm like motion sickness can't handle it i'm like oh, really? i'm getting to be middle-aged i'm like yeah. <laughs> so i <laughs> so i uh they take off they open the door and it was like a run and gun get there because at cedar point for a good ride man you can wait three four hours especially mm -hmm. when it's like new we are racing i'm wearing flip-flops like an idiot because who wears <laughs> flip-flops to ride roller coasters but Whatever, I lose a flip flop. I don't care. I don't turn around. I spend the rest of the day barefoot because I am running oh. to the Millennium Force. Oh, on that I, pavement. Ooh. On that pavement. It is hot. Ah. I get there. I only have to wait half an hour because I'm one of the first people that wasn't an employee to ride <laughs> the Millennium Force. You have permits going on the bottom of your feet, but you were there first. That's the important. <laughs> yeah. I have terrible scars from Ohio blacktop, from grainy <laughs> Ohio blacktop. <laughs> Wheel, Wheel of, of anecdotes. anecdotes. All right. Uh, well, Kelly, I'd like to congratulate you. You have won the game. Your prize is you get to talk to me a little more. Oh my gosh. I feel so excited. Thank you. Um, thank you, Trash Man Guy. And <laughs> <laughs> trash Can Man. Trash Can oh, Man. Oh, Trash Can Man. Trash Man Guy. <laughs> I knew it was three words. There is some some uh, fine print on that. Before we talk more, I have to play an ad real quick. Are you okay with that? Oh yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Is so it for we'll Cedar play... Point? <laughs> it is not for... I'm, I'm trying to book them. If you know anyone, let, yeah. <laughs> let me know. So All right. right. A uh, quick ad uh, from a stream studio, our sponsor, and we'll be right back. Where I'm From is brought to you by Stream Studio. That's S-T-R-E-A-N-N -N Studio. The web app that puts you in charge of the live show. 
Stream Studio allows you to take your streaming game to the next level by allowing you to stream to multiple platforms at once. If you want to go to Twitch, if you want to go to YouTube, you can stream to all of those platforms at once get feedback from your audience, and most importantly, it puts you in control of the show. Now, Stream Studio has several packages that work for just about any type of broadcaster. From the free plan, where you can stream with a watermark, all the way up to the gold plan, where you can have up to eight guests, you can stream to as many social platforms as you want, you can get a web link to share your show with external audiences, and you can even get an iframe so you can embed your live stream show directly into your website. Hey, I love Stream Studio so much, I'm using it to produce this show. I want to thank Stream Studio for supporting where I'm from. And you can give this fantastic software a spin and support where I'm from at the same time. Just head over to our website at billmeeks.com slash where I'm from and click on the Stream Studio banner so they know we sent you their way. And we're back. I want to thank uh, Stream Studio for sponsoring our podcast. Go check them out. Great, great product. Does Mansfield have any sort of like local urban legends or scandals or <gasps> true crime issues or anything? Yes, it does. Oh, my gosh. Excellent. Okay. I'm excited. Mansfield, Ohio. It was such a hot summer day. I, like we didn't have air conditioning in our little ranch style home yet on our two and a half acres. And <laughs> so we're all laying in mom and dad's room because they had a big box fan. And we're watching on our TV again, did not was not raised with much money. So everything was pretty, pretty low. And yeah. we're watching on TV and the antenna is going just so we can get reception of the local channel. And I see this little boy take what I came to learn later is a witness stand and he mm -hmm. stands up and says, I believe my father killed my mother. So this scandal was this doctor had uh, his, his wife uh, had gone missing. Come to find out as the police are investigating, uh, he had a mistress and the mistress and he uh, had taken off and they had like a vacation home in Pennsylvania. It, I may be getting some of these facts wrong, but this is what I remember. Yeah. Turns out in his home, which you can still drive by the home and go, that's where the doctor, uh, Dr. Boyle, uh, like, oh, that's the doc that's Dr. Boyle's house. Turns out his wife, he had killed her. Mm. buried her in the basement. Ooh. He had gotten a jackhammer. This is how they tracked him down is he had rented a jackhammer, traced it back to the house. There was newly poured cement underneath a rug, underneath a bookshelf or bookcase. And he had buried her there. And the little boy was in the, if I remember correctly, in the house, heard the scream, didn't know where his mom was. His dad was always a very like, mm, eh, like, you like, yeah. be a man, boy. And he, this boy was like a sensitive little boy and was very close to his mom, not close to his father. And at 10 years old or however old he was, incredibly articulate, incredibly smart, gets up and has to testify against his own father. A documentary, a documentary wow. came out that this kid helped. I mean, now he's a, an adult, like in his 40s, probably basically doing a documentary now as an adult. His father kept writing in letters and finally was like, OK, I'm going to go see my dad. And yeah. it's a fascinating documentary for someone from Mansfield. I think it would be a good documentary for anybody because you were you're with the trauma of a kid who has through therapy. I mean, he's done therapy for years and years and years. He wants to live a good life. He himself yeah. has not become an abuser and a psycho like his dad as a complete narcissistic psycho. For me, that was my onset into loving true crime. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's like there's a kid having to testify against his own dad and he's doing it with no remorse and shame knowing he's putting his dad in prison for life because he knows yeah. his dad killed his mom. Like, that's crazy. Super dramatic situation because, like, you have the two people you trust and count on most in the world. Yeah. One of them's gone and the other one did it. And now you have to, like, stand against that. For, oh, man. Yeah. That's like, yeah. That's a quagmire. <laughs> it is sure. a it is a moral quagmire. I think for the kid, it, it was less of a quagmire than we think because his dad was a butthead. His dad was a jerk and he knew it. <laughs> and now this person that he loved, his precious mother, yeah. is gone. Oh, mm. man. Dark. Plus, oh, and that did also incite, incite uh, for me a deep fear of losing my parents. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, so it, that, 
I think that's a healthy fear to have. That's okay. That's emotionally okay. I like I, for my entire childhood, could never say goodbye to my parents <laughs> because I was convinced they were going to die in a car accident or they were going to be dead. They were just, every mm. time I said goodbye, I was like, and I'll never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least that I, oh no, this is bad to say. At least that way you'd eventually be prepared for it. If it happened, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just said that. I know. Uh, You're horrible. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So, I know. so Sarah Jessica Parker horse face is what you just did. So, uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, basically. You know, I, I think teachers are so important to how we kind of grow up and turn out in everything. Were there any uh, teachers in Mansfield that had a particular impact on you? My mom taught at the school that I went to. So I went to, Ooh. I went to, again, very, very conservative family, very conservative town, went to Christian schools from a kindergarten yeah. all the way through college. Okay. <laughs> so very, very sheltered. And, mm-hmm. uh, my, uh, mom taught at my school and I had her as a teacher in junior high. And my mom is very passionate, very animated students uh, for the most part, love her. And she had a couple students that hated her because mm-hmm. she would, expect a lot of them in in yeah. her loving way and especially if a if a kid didn't like somebody who was like very bubbly and very animated that does that annoys people sometimes i know i annoy some people for sure i i know i know for a fact no, I know, no. some people no. have told me <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, you're too happy all the time i'm like i'm not come sit with me in sadness i will meet you in the darkest of places and just freaking sit there with you <laughs> i can do that's part of what makes a comedian a comedian right you've had trauma you can sit in that darkness <laughs> that's the second half of the show we'll get there Go okay on. great yeah but i also enjoy living my life with for the most part focusing on the light and the fun and like looking, mm-hmm. looking for things that entertain me and entertain others. But, uh, my mom, uh, there was this kid who was a bully. I will call him Jeff, which was his first name, <laughs> <laughs> which was exactly, his which name. is exactly his name. I won't tell you his last name because <laughs> I don't remember it, <laughs> but Jeff, these are the facts pushed me and he pushed me because he actually said to another kid, like, watch this. I bet Mrs. Roman won't give Kelly uh, detention. He came up, mm. shoved me, and I pushed him back. <laughs> <laughs> so mom gave us both detentions. <laughs> so I got a detention from my mother. Did that feel at all like a betrayal or were you like, I felt we kind of deserved it? I felt hurt. For sure, I felt hurt. Because also as a teenager, I was not close to my mom. I was really one of those people that was like, I need to differentiate myself from my mom. I am my own person. And mom and I were really, we did not get along at all. Mm -hmm. And so I, I felt, I think I felt this betrayal that I couldn't articulate, but years later, now my mom and I are very close, incredibly (laughs) close. And she did it. She gave me a detail. She knew it, I did not start it. She knew it was Jeff's fault, but she knew that if she did not give me a detention, I was going to be bullied worse. Yeah, it's like the appearance of impropriety kind of thing. Like, like, oh, yeah, she didn't get detention because her mom's the teacher. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which I would have not gotten detention because I was shoved hard <laughs> And just pushed back. Well, I don't know. Maybe I would have given me a detention. Like, you know, it's like the second blow is the one that starts the cycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one, maybe both people could walk away from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It takes someone to not push back. You know, in the contact we had before the show today and even already in the show today, your grandfather's come up a couple times. Oh, why, don't, yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, grandfather and, you know, kind of what he meant to you uh, growing up? It's interesting because my grandfather grew up in Mansfield, grew up very poor, grew up um, during the Depression. And he was born in 1926. He grew up in downtown. Like I, I can point to the corner where his house stood. And now it's a parking lot um, and has been for years and years, even before he died. He died in 2012. But he he was just this force of being so smart. He could take apart anything mechanical and put it back together. And he just would for fun. He would sit on his back patio and he would just do that while watching birds. But he was also Mm -hmm. this incredible storyteller and a people person. He was an extrovert, but had a lot of what I I think the skills that I attribute to introverts of being like very sciencey and very mathy. (laughs) I don't know if (laughs) there's actually a connection there. There's probably not. But for me, I'm like, oh, smart people 
are alone. <laughs> <laughs> they well, like to be alone. They don't need me. They don't like me. Like uh, <laughs> you're not you're not a hundred percent wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But my grandpa was uh, an extrovert who also like he was also just curious about life. Um, and it's one of those very complicated, hard things as you are a kid. You're fascinated by this authority figure who like does everything cool. He was interested in life. At one point, he bought a, a tape about how to learn how to Irish dance and he was teaching himself how to Irish dance. Like, But then to also realize he was racist. He mm. was sexist he um the things that he would say and do it took us a long time i think as kids to get the confidence to say grandpa don't say that i don't Mm -hmm. i'm not comfortable having you say that not only you can't say that but don't say that around me like you can't say oh yes i can right like it's it's such a complicated thing people say oh his his dad was more racist i don't (laughs) care (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's (laughs) You do have to have at least a little bit of sympathy for the person on that side of it, too, because it's like those attitudes were normalized a lot. Yeah, when, right. When they were growing up and stuff. And, you know, if someone told me today that uh, if I have heart problems, I should eat red meat, I'd be like, no, like experts have been telling me for years. People <laughs> I trust have been telling me for years that red meat will make my heart yeah. worse. So it, it, it's a hard situation, but yeah, it, it's hard when it's someone you care about too, right? It's, it's wild because he's, I mean, yeah, just the good and the bad that the good and the bad and the ignorance and the hate and the love and the weird. He never said mm-hmm. he loved me ever. I always knew it. I always knew it, but never said he loved me until my grandma died. So it's interesting that someone who brings with it such complex feelings and emotions being raised in this small town that he never left, except for when he did his tour all over the Pacific as a (laughs) Marine scout in World War II. He signed up at 17, lied about his age, went all over the Pacific, had two or three Purple Hearts from injuries, being sent home. He got back Mm -hmm. up and went. He was on a, a medical ship from getting shrapnel uh, shot into him when uh, the the war was over. And so he came home and like he and my grandma, grandma refused to marry him for another five years because he wasn't a Christian. <laughs> until, he, until he accepted Jesus into his heart, Ma, grandma was like, nope. I was going to say, <laughs> Not did, she finally wear him, did she finally wear him down or did he wear her down? No. He finally, she finally wore him down or at least he wanted sex bad enough that she... <laughs> <laughs> he finally was like, I'll become a Christian. <laughs> Fine, I guess. Uh, amen or whatever. Um, amen or whatever. Yeah. But he was also, he had like these strong convictions to, he never took a prostitute in the war, but he said every, all the other guys did. But I believe it when he mm-hmm. said he didn't. I mean, he's this man of like, he was like, I've never taken a prostitute, but I hate black people. Like <laughs> These messed <laughs> up ideas of what morality yeah. is. It's like, what? Who, Don't I steal, mean, but you can kill a little bit. That's fine. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's so wild. Yeah, you know, he's all going through Mansfield. I not only had my grandma; her, she was raised there too. So anywhere, literally every corner, every place, anywhere I could go in Mansfield has a history that my family knew about. And my grandpa worked for; he did a bunch of odd jobs. Again, so smart. If he would have gone to college, if that would have been an option for him. Who knows where he would have gone, what he would have done, what he would have invented. I'm sure he would have invented some mechanical things. But there was a town called Kira, a big home there called Kingwood Center. This guy, mm-hmm. last name was Kingwood, didn't have kids, left this big, beautiful house to the town with a bunch of gardens for people to just enjoy afterward. It kind of became this like local park, I guess. Um, and it, my grandfather worked there. And so I, as a kid, would like getting to see the beautiful Mansfield Renaissance Theater and then getting to go to Kingwood Center. It gave me this idea of people can have more than what I had. People can have more than what my family came from. My one grand, my one great grandfather was a grocer. My grandpa's father was an alcoholic, abusive drunk who beat him a whole bunch and then died young, leaving him Mm -hmm. and his brother to be raised by my grandma and oh, with two sisters, too. So a mom of four. There's some belief within the family that my grandmother prostituted herself in order to survive. A bunch of men came in to her house, which either they were boarders, which wasn't uncommon, uh, Mm. or they 
were, you know, borders, borders. Yeah. Borders with air quotes. Uh, (laughs) And then she also played uh, piano for the silent movies. Hmm. So that's super rad. But this Kingwood Center, yeah, is just it is an absolute point of pride for Mansfield, Ohio. If you ever go, go to go to Kingwood Center. It's not the biggest house you'll ever see, but the grounds are stunning and they're sprawling and there's they do a really good job of keeping it up. Now you do have to pay to because the trust ran out or whatever to just keep it free. You have to pay like 10 bucks to yeah. for a car to just go and just walk around, take a picnic. It's the most romantic thing in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Just knowing that my grandpa worked there. It was always this like point of pride like my grandpa worked there my grandfather did <laughs> that guy's plumbing <laughs> and it is it is a thing to be proud of plumbers are freaking incredible and it's a very reliable paycheck the thing i always used to tell people in wheeling was that my grandfather helped build like the dams that were set up between the west virginia and wow. ohio side wow so so i could be like yeah my grandfather helped he put wood together because he was a carpenter or something. Yeah, <laughs> but that's so cool. Bragging rights, local bragging rights. Local bragging rights. They, I, that's <laughs> It makes me feel, well, they say you're not forgotten until your name is uttered for the last time, right? That's when you truly die. Yeah. So it's those stories of, yeah, the things you do in life. You don't have to be a, a famous, you know, actor or whatever, mm-hmm. famous anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. If people, yeah, just the way we give to the world in whatever capacity we can. So, uh, Kelly, what took you away from Mansfield? (laughs) Well, first, college. Uh, (laughs) Second, uh, you know, acting, really. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do it. I didn't think, I mean, I didn't think I could because I grew up in a town where I didn't know anybody who had. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody who had made a, a life or a career from it. Um, yeah. I grew up in a town that had a lot of scary stories about what happens to people when they move away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Especially to some place like, I don't know, Los Angeles. Exactly. Hollywood. Yeah. But I, I fortunately kept getting the stepping stone acting jobs that kept mm-hmm. taking me to new places. I love going home, though. <laughs> going home for the holidays is rad. Mm-hmm. I cannot go to, but because my parents, my grandparents, I mean, my I'm generationally from there. Uh, on my mom's side, that <laughs> I can't, when I, especially when I'm shopping with my mom, I cannot go to a grocery store or even a CVS or anything <laughs> without seeing someone we know. My mom was a teacher at yeah. the at the public school and then at the private school when I went to the private school. So we also see all people who are her students or parents of students. It's it's a cool you place to go. You got a lot of to. face time in the community. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Does anyone ever bring up, you know, the stuff you've done since you left when you come back? Like, are they like, oh, yeah, my kid watches your show or, you know, I saw you on Grey's Anatomy or whatever. Yeah, for sure. And social media helps with that. I mean, people are able to, like, reach out and and (laughs) say things on those channels. But whenever we're whenever I see anybody in public, in public, too, and also in, Mm -hmm. like, special events and stuff, when I was yeah with sprout they would bring me in to do, like, autograph signings. And I've I've hosted the Ohio Cable Television awards a couple times and things as like a a local definitely my hometown is very very proud of me i feel it you know i've been in the paper a couple times when i do when i do things (laughs) they (laughs) they like to put me in the paper and it it sounds like your community in general was pretty supportive of your ambition so it's probably not a situation like ha i showed you you're just like genuinely glad for the affection yes yes people weren't telling me not to do things they were just saying i don't it, it'll be safer if you don't, you know, they weren't <laughs> saying we don't believe in you. Oh, yeah, I, 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 they are the whole town, really. And like the church I grew up in, the so many of those people um, were and are like my is There are some people that are just my parents, great friends that love me to this day and don't judge and just mm-hmm. support the Hedricks, the voices, the money smiths <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh the krauses i can't forget the krauses krauses if you listen to this can't forget you <laughs> you know you say you seem to get back there pretty often what has been the biggest change since you left cuteness it is so much cuter that it well i mean it went through those growing pains of like yikes it's only chain stuff everything's gross and now there's this like you know revival of wanting locally owned stuff and cute little shops and uh, yeah. I think it's great. There are some of those tried and true things that are 
fortunately have not closed that just stay amazing. There is a carousel in downtown Mansfield that is made with hand carved horses and animals made in Mansfield, Ohio. There used to be, I don't know if there still is, a factory by factory. I mean, it's people sitting there like whittling away to make these carousel (laughs) horses. And uh, uh, my favorite little restaurant destination, it is a Coney dog place called Coney Island. Mm-hmm. <laughs> called Coney. So people are like, oh, I go to Coney Island. I'm like, I don't think of New York. I don't think of the <laughs> iconic thing everyone thinks about. I think of this little tiny hot dog restaurant that has this 1950s feel to it in Mansfield. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> D- define for me real quick what a, a, the, the difference is between like a corn dog and a Coney dog. So a Coney dog is a hot dog that has like a chili sauce on top of it. With, gotcha. It's like a chili sauce and onions. Thank you for the clarification. I Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a whole nother game in my dock. Unfortunately, I have to leave in about five minutes to go pick okay. up my kids from school. So I would love to thank you for joining me today, Kelly. I'm sorry we couldn't do improv together. It's an improv game, too. I was really excited. But uh, Well, invite me back and I'll pretend I'm from someplace else. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you've been everywhere, man. Maybe I have. Like, I can also talk about Philly. Philly's where I owned yeah. my first home. That's where I first had my adult life. You know what? I've actually I lived in Philly for about a year. So we could discuss Philly. Yes, I will. I seriously, as soon as we're done here, I'll email you back in the next month or two. We'll we'll book an episode two with Philly. I love Great. it. I love, love it. it. Excellent. Well, thank you to anyone who joined us on our live stream today. If you thank like you, Trash show- Can Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you like the show, I do highly suggest you go over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave an honest review that's five stars and says the show was perfect. Uh, you know, so to help us get out to more viewers and everything. If you uh, like what we talked about here, if you want to talk about where you're from, you can go ahead and shoot me an email, bill at billmeeks.com. And you can find uh, links to all the other episodes of Where I'm From, show notes, contact info, and a clickable link to our sponsor over at BillMeeks.com slash Where I'm From. Uh, we generally try to go live on Twitch.tv slash BillMeeks, YouTube.com slash at BillMeeksLA. They changed up how they did it recently. Well, that does it for this week. Join us next time when I talk to somebody else about where they're from. I was just able to see a little bit of the video. (laughs) Hi, I'm Kelly, and this is my friend, Chica.